So time has now come to test the, the both dovetails are correctly aligned to one another. As you remember, I have scraped the fixed dovetails on both sides to the reference planes. And um, I've also, well, yeah, also take the time to prove how to scrape in. So I have references like so, so, and also then, of course, this side, like so, that matches up. <coughs> and then, as far as I can see, there are two ways to, to measure up the uh, dovetail with the gib section. Um, so of course right so, but that's apparent from now. That this will have to be clamped in if I was to to measure up, you know, like uh, I have measured this, I could measure this side also. So um, I think the other alternative would be also like normal to use pins in here and then measure up this but to do this uh, i need to prove that surface and um, i already have um, measured here that this is almost a tenth of a millimeter lower on that side the same repeats on this side so what i want to do now is to just without touching the dovetails, uh, of course, but because there is a, a certain amount of, um, of relief in here, I can then <coughs> use a um, cutter, just mill this or skim this lightly to get that better, possibly then avoiding scraping here at all, and then use the pins. Because as it is now with this lower, if I use the pins directly here, of course this would sit lower and hence uh, more also it will measure fatter on that side which would not be true uh, at least for the dovetail section um, that that was it would give me a false reading so to speak uh, okay the same applies for, of course for this side also here with this that was also not true enough to be used here for the pin measurements so I'll Try to correct that by scrape, no, by uh, means of milling. And of course, this should be a straightforward mill job. Won't you agree? It's clamping down, uh, aligning it, and then feeding a cutter in here. Well, as always, gremlins occur. In this case, it manifests itself in the fact that this is a 55 degree dovetail. Uh, used, I think, in bridge ports, but um, most often, I think, yeah, at least in Europe, it's 45 or 60. Anyway, my only 55 degree cutter is this one, which is also both large enough, still not high enough to be able to be used in, in this dovetail application, but to be able to face down here and get into the corner. But, as you can see, this is only for horizontal arbor mounting. So then I have to decide whether I have to buy myself a new big enough cutter or use one that is uh, with a shallow angle, 45, which can penetrate in here and then still is big enough to give me uh, room because I need clearance for as evidenced here, for instance, by this cutter. Shank uh, obstructs um, at least. This is also not the same. Uh, actually, this is 60 degrees, I think. So, this will not be able to be used. If it had been big enough, it would still not get into the corner. So, um, I may not be needing to get further into the corner. I have to be careful then. So, options are to use whatever means I have here, uh, or actually just uh, um, scrape it. But just to prove my point, I will try.
try to use this and then see what kind of pins that I can get in, even though this is not into the corner. So maybe this is my choice. So say I use these pins here, which seem to be contacting around the midpoint here of the dovetail. I mean, the center will go like so. So that could be it that I use this and then the they will have to be, I mean, here, around here, they contact. So this is around the area that I will need to mill down. And the, as you can see, if I, if I use this as a stop, or at least don't go further there, I still am quite good over that. So I cover here. And, uh, and out, of course. Yeah, I am uh, satisfied with that, so I'll use this one. And then you can see, with a little bit of ingenuity, although I didn't have the correct tooling, I still I uh, think I can manage just a skim cut with this cutter. And then just checking, you know, clocking it in up here, and then. I had to turn the casting around because I misjudged uh, the travel uh, on the milling machine. So at least we have the high point over here. And when we move down on this side, it becomes like uh, seven low, seven hundredths of a millimeter, almost uh, three. So could scrape it. But, um, yeah, and then on the other side, up here, it's a little bit like the same, I think. Go, could be uh, there, okay. Yeah, almost the same. So, high point here, and then we indicate, then move a little bit down, and then just mill up, and like in that this area so that I can enter the pin like so and be certain that this and this measures the same I'll do it with the cutter here and of course uh, it doesn't have to be dead accurate just so that it clears And uh, try to clock it in. And then see, it clears all the way. Which it does, but I can still give it a little bit more clearance. So I'm touching zero here and then I'll just, I know that I'm seven low on the inside, so I'll just set zero and then go down in at least a couple of increments until I have finished. And I see that it's, it should then uh, match when I have seven uh, hundreds or roughly three thou uh, on the DRO. And that should then uh, match out with the, what I measured down here. Touching there. Locking down this axis.
that's four. I'll set the depth there. Again, engage four bit also, of course. I think I got it all there. It's a bit rough. Can scrape that. Um, let's measure. So just test it here. Jumping a bit, but it's proof to me it is at least around zero there. So it's jumping a little bit around, but at least um, I just give it the scrape afterwards. Now it's at least flat to that surface. Had the reclamp uh, here because the cutter must clear. It's not ideal, but I think I can live with that. So keeping the same height and then just uh, cutting this side. Just touching here again and then everything else should be okay. Well, I don't know if uh, you saw uh, the error I made. Uh, at least it doesn't make any difference. But first I clocked up to that surface here, which was correct. But then I saw when I introduced the cutter here that uh, the gap didn't match up, so I, I clocked it into the gap here. So this was, uh, of course, then um, following that. But in doing so, I <laughs> I made a taper. I didn't realize big before I, I did this side. But as you can see now, this is now uh, some two, three millimeters uh, off that edge while it is snug up here. That's because this is the edge that I should have, or the side that I should have clocked up to. <laughs> I said I have enough clearance here on the both, uh, I mean, both uh, ways here to put the pin in uh, in the section I have milled anyway, so it doesn't matter. But you see, small error. Uh, and then the same here, I have enough uh, here on this side because I, I wouldn't have needed to go that far in. But anyway, I have this now snug, so uh, I know that this also then sits directly on here. So small error uh, could have been significant, but in this case uh, it wasn't. And I uh, scraped it a couple of times and I uh, stoned it and now I see, I can see at least I'm within sort of plus minus one hundredth of a millimeter. That side at least. And on the other side also, zero there. A bit hard for you to see, but at least zero. Then moving up, uh, plus a little bit. Minus a little bit. And then you up at minus one. Yeah, it's a little bit off there. But here I have, a, I think, a good enough starting point. A little bit more scraping and then I can use the pins. And now, since I know that these are in plane with here, I can use the pins and then this will give me a, a verifiable and a accurate reading. Of the, the error here, of course, not forgetting the the gib. And um, here I have several means. I can use um, the micrometer, of course, which would be the best. Can also use the guesstimator. But I wanted to show you a different method also. 
that method is by using Johansson gauge box. So, um, of course, here we have a um, set with different standards. And what I mean by using them here in this purpose is to build up so that you get a verifiable distance. See. Yep. Like so. And then building up to get here and here and here the same reading and then at least you can then very easily see down to the uh, the least I have here is uh, five thousandths difference five thousandths of a, uh, four thousandths of a millimeter oh, which is um, two tenths or less and then I can introduce or, or take it out so I can measure with that kind of accuracy uh, just another means of doing the same of course you correct that uh, on the on the gib there i already scraped the gibs as you can see both gibs are scraped uh, where did i put the other one here and that's another story also And I see that on this side it's a little bit fatter. So 18. Twenty. So in the middle it should then be something um, in between. It's also well up here. Ah, it passes here also. Eighteen. So we can put seventeen in also. Nineteen. This pass is also okay. Might have say twenty. Now this also passes, but it may be um, half a thou uh, factor up here. I would judge. So that uh, means we have to adjust the angle a little bit on that. Or, uh, and of course I will measure up uh, more and more. I will verify with the other means I have just to see. But I think this was uh, just a, a sidestep, but a, a worthwhile uh, addition to maybe a, if you have them. I've never used it before. So um, I was at least one, one uh, let's say, application where you can use it yeah i almost uh, forgot of course you'll do the same uh, measurements and the uh, milling and um, adjustment on the on the upper uh, dovetail section i mean with the relief there and i i don't bother to to make this in the center any anything uh, different or to mill that same goes for the upper here